So do you have a time frame in mind uh, for when Fortescue might have a, a fully uh, battery powered fleet? Well, Paul, we've had a goal for some time now to be to achieve net zero emissions by 2030. So that is an industry leading target. The acquisition of Williams Advanced Engineering certainly allows us to continue to accelerate our drive to achieve that net zero emissions and importantly, to eliminate the use of diesel across our mining fleet. So we're certainly on an accelerated path. We've been working with Williams Advanced Engineering since early 2021, as they worked with us to design battery technology to support the electrification of our mining fleet. So this is a really important development. We're still on that very ambitious goal to achieve net zero emissions for scope one and two by 2030. And this is certainly going to help us to accelerate that journey. So Williams Engineering, of course, UK based, a very long way from where you are in Perth and from where your main operations are in the Pilbara. Are there any plans to bring that company to Australia? Our, our plan is that Williams and, and Williams Advanced Engineering and the team they have there will continue to operate in, in the UK. And they've been working with us, as I said, since early 2021. So we know that we can work with them. They've got access to technology. They've got a great team of people who are absolute cutting edge and leading experts in their field. So we intend to maintain their presence in the UK, but obviously they're going to work closely with us. It's not, not only as we decarbonise Fortescue's mining operations, but importantly, there's the opportunity for us to also uh, sell this technology to others as we advance this decarbonisation of heavy industry. Is that a factor in why you decided for full ownership of the company instead of, say, having contracts with manufacturers like your rivals Rio or BHP have done? Absolutely. We see this as part of our, our strategy. We are diversifying to a green energy and resources company, and this is a further demonstration of that, of that diversification strategy. So this wasn't about entering, entering into an agreement with Williams Advanced Engineering. This was about seeing the opportunity, knowing that this is part of our diversification strategy. So we've made that decision to acquire Williams Advanced Engineering. It'll fit very well with our broader decarbonisation plans, but also with Fortescue Future Industries. And that's part of our journey to develop this renewable energy business, working with companies like Williams Advanced Engineering. And we've made a number of other announcements around manufacturing of electrolyzers in Gladstone in Queensland, for example. So this is another demonstration of that strategy and that diversification of Fortescue. How challenging is the backdrop right now for Fortescue, especially when it comes to Chinese demand, not to mention the supply chain disruptions and labor shortages that the pandemic has created? Well, we're seeing strong demand for our products from our customers in China. So we're seeing very robust demand. Uh, we'll be announcing our December quarterly production report tomorrow. Um, but operationally, the team are performing incredibly well. And as I said, we continue to see strong demand. There's no doubt that there are challenges around labour shortages in Western Australia and the ongoing border restrictions. We've been managing that for some time now. We've got robust COVID-19 management plans in place. And we'll work closely with the state government as, as we deal with the the changing landscape in terms of when those border restrictions will ease. But there is no doubt that there's strong demand for labour in Western Australia, uh, both here locally and also access to that labour on the East Coast will become critically important. Yes, very strong demand for labour. And as you say, uh, the Western Australian government pushing back uh, that uh, border reopening. But uh, if the lesson from the eastern states of Australia is anything, it's that once Omicron uh, gets hold, um, it's very hard to contain. Were you supportive of that decision to keep the border shut? It, it can't be helping your labour issues. Well, the mining and resources industry has had a mandate for vaccination for some time now. So by the 1st of January, anybody entering a uh, mine site in the Pilbara has to be vaccinated. So we've worked closely with the state government to imp implement that mandate of vaccination policy. So we have got very high rates of vaccination in Western Australia. Um, certainly the health and safety of the West Australian community and the West Australian population is critically important. So we will work closely with the state government. Uh, we were looking forward to borders reopening, knowing that we have a very high rate of vaccination. We have other testing procedures in place to ensure we fully test uh, anybody who travels to one of our sites. So we've been working uh, through that for some time now. Uh, we, we would like to see at some point greater certainty around the opening of borders.